Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at why Coke tried to switch to New Coke. It turns out there was actually, if you squinted the problem hard enough, a semi-good reason for making the switch. It didn't work out, of course, but then again, it did kind of work out amazingly well at the same time, as you'll soon see. Now, before I get into the real reason for the switch, let me debunk the conspiracy theory that Coca-Cola was trying to swindle people into accepting high fructose corn syrup over sugar in their drink by pulling the new Coke stunt. The truth of the matter is that they'd already allowed bottlers to use high fructose corn syrup in Coke for about five years before they introduced new Coke. Most bottlers made the switch pretty quickly because of the drastic cost saving. Initially, Coca-Cola allowed a 50% corn syrup substitution, and by about six months before the introduction of new Coke, nearly every major bottler of Coca-Cola was using 100% high fructose corn syrup rather than sugar or a mixture of the two. So those who claimed they could taste a difference because of the high fructose corn syrup after the return of the old Coca-Cola actually had already been drinking it with high fructose corn syrup, in most cases, long before New Coke. Coca-Cola did consider not announcing that they were switching to New Coke with a plan to just very gradually change the flavor, but they ended up deciding that it was too risky, because if someone noticed, it might become a huge news story and hurt sales from the bad publicity. So what really was the motivation for switching to New Coke? Coke had steadily been losing ground to Pepsi, and by the early 1980s, tastes tests done by Coca-Cola and Pepsi showed that most people tested preferred Pepsi over Coke. Further, if not for Coke's exclusive contracts with many restaurants and vending machine operators, Pepsi would have been drastically outselling Coke as it was in supermarkets and other locations where people had a choice. Coca-Cola thus set about changing their formula to come up with something people would prefer over the original Coke and Pepsi. Specifically, they created New Coke based on their Diet Coke formula. Diet Coke was extremely popular right from the start, rocketing up to the third most popular cola after Pepsi and Coke within just a few years of its launch, even though it was a new flavor and not based on regular Coke, as the name seems to imply. Thus, as taste tests showed that more people preferred the taste of Diet Coke to regular Coke, they decided to primarily just take out the artificial sweeteners in Diet Coke and substituted in high fructose corn syrup. With a few more minor modifications, they succeeded in creating an apparently tasty drink. This wasn't a case of them not doing their due diligence on whether it was better than the original Coca-Cola. They knew full well how big of a deal it was to abandon their old formulation. As such, they ran numerous tests that showed that the vast majority of people preferred the new formulation over the old, and it also beat out Pepsi by a decent margin. What exactly went wrong is still partially up for debate, but the heart of the issue is basically the nostalgia factor, and that they'd spent nearly a century marketing their product as something you can't live without, and then they took it away. People had apparently taken the message to heart. While the taste tests made New Coke look great, they never actually explicitly asked the question in any of their tests, would you care if we switched in this new formulation of Coke and got rid of the old? They didn't do this because they didn't want people to know that they were developing a new formula at all. They did ask a very similar question that subtly implied the previous question and the results should have clued them into the descent. They asked tasters who had liked it, would you buy this new flavor if it were Coca-Cola? While the majority said yes, about 10% said no and got angry about the subtle implication of getting rid of Coke. While this is a small percentage, the problem ahead was illustrated in that these 10% were very vocal about their dissent and had a tendency to try to convince other testers that they should switch their answer to no too. This is exactly how it played out when New Coke was introduced. At first, sales were up a significant amount over the previous year, even more than Coca-Cola had expected. And according to surveys run by Coca-Cola, most people preferred the new flavor over the old. Just as importantly, the majority of existing Coke drinkers continued to buy Coke at the same levels as they did before. Further, most of the few customers they lost weren't switching to Pepsi, they were simply just not drinking Coke anymore. Coca-Cola stock went up, and things were looking really good. 
But then the vocal minority started kicking up their heels. Complaints trickled in, and angered Coke fans started enlisting the aid of the media. Soon that trickle developed into a flood. One man, Gay Mullins, even started the Old Cola Drinkers of America organization to lobby for the return of Old Coke, or at least try to get Coca-Cola to license out the formula to someone else. The fact that in a blind taste test, Mullins picked New Coke over Old Coke as his favorite didn't stop him from attempting to sue Coca-Cola over the switch. The dissenters started convincing others. Many who had never even tried New Coke decided they hated it before even tasting it, primarily because they were upset at the fact that the original Coke was no longer available. Finally, just three months after New Coke was introduced, the public outcry forced Coca-Cola to release the old formula under the name Coca-Cola Classic. So why did they get rid of Coca-Cola Classic in the first place, rather than just introducing New Coke as a separate drink right off the bat? There were a few reasons, but the big one was because the market for cola drinks at the time was shrinking fast, and by introducing another Coke substitute, having introduced Diet Coke in 1982, they feared it would split the market for their product with many people who would have drunk Coca-Cola Classic now drinking New Coke. This would allow Pepsi to take the top spot by a good margin, allowing Pepsi to not only claim taste tests showed people preferred Pepsi, but also to boast about how Pepsi was the most popular cola in the world. Coca-Cola was unwilling to give this market marketing advantage to Pepsi, so decided to get rid of the original Coke in favor of New Coke. After all, every test they ran showed people preferred the new formulation anyways. What could have possibly gone wrong? Despite this switch not working out the way they hoped, it did in the end work out amazingly well. After this fiasco, Coca-Cola Classic, instead of continuing its steady decline, began to take back market share over both Pepsi and New Coke. This was despite the fact that when people were blind taste tested, they continued to almost universally pick both New Coke and Pepsi as better tasting than Coca-Cola Classic. Some theorize that the taste tests here are flawed because they often only gave people small sips, thus the sweeter tasting Pepsi and New Coke would perform better, whereas when drunk normally they might be too sweet, and so Coca-Cola would win in those cases. Those who theorize this is the reason for Coke losing out in the taste tests tend to state that Pepsi's steady rise before this fiasco was not due to superior taste, but from their superior marketing, particularly to youth. Whatever the case, while the whole thing was a fiasco that looked for a time like it might kill the brand, six months after the return of the original Coke, Coca-Cola sales had risen to double the rate of Pepsi, and it continued to climb. Thus, the blunder ultimately was a huge part of why Coca-Cola was able to re-establish itself as the world's most popular cola. Sometimes doing something stupid can really pay off. Bonus fact. Despite New Coke sales dropping like crazy after the return of classic Coke, when the Wall Street Journal in 1987 did yet another blind taste test of Pepsi, classic Coke, and New Coke, with most of the participants before the test saying they preferred one or the other of Coke or Pepsi, New Coke won out as the most popular choice again. Much like the New Coke dissenters when the people were told they'd picked New Coke as their favorite instead of their previously stated favorites of Coke or Pepsi, rather than deciding they'd start drinking New Coke, they Dominantly got angry at the testers. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you'll probably enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.